Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 66. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Business 210 Chapter 6. If you're in the class, go to our Chapter 6 website. Chapter 6, Continuous Probability Distribution, and the famous and often used bell curve, or normal curve, or as we will see, a standard normal curve. Now, I want to start off uh, over in our PDFs, oops, and I want to talk about, compare what we did last chapter, discrete, and what we're going to do this chapter, continuous. Now, discrete random variable, there were no gaps between numbers. I mean, there, sorry, there are gaps, right? So we were counting one, two, three. The number of successes, the number of times uh, we got heads in flipping a coin. Over in continuous, there's no gaps between the numbers. So uh, we can assume any value in an interval or collection of intervals. Ah, that's different than the discrete random variable, right? Can only assume clearly separated values, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, etc. Uh, discrete, usually from counting successes. Continuous, oh, it depends on the measuring instrument, right? Because we could be weighing a cereal box at a manufacturing plant. So depending on the instrument, we could get any, um, we get 12 ounces, 12.1, 12.001, etc. Scores on a statistics Excel test, right? It could be 1, 2, 3, but it's not. You can get, uh, in my class, you can get 6.9348912 for a score on a particular problem. Salary earned, even though dollars seems like a discrete random variable, right? Pennies, 1, 2, 3. It's uh, not, and we could have fractions of pennies when we're doing calculations. Uh, miles, auto, tire, uh, auto tires last is another example. Our examples that we did last chapter, number of bedrooms in a house, what's the probability of getting uh, three bedrooms in a house, for example. Number of times that you were late. Uh, we did that with uh, airplane arrivals, number of times interrupted. We'll actually do an example uh, this chapter, but um, uh, at times you're interrupted per hour at your job. Number of heads, so those are examples of discrete continuous. Now on with our distinction. Oh, there's a discrete probability distribution and a continuous probability distribution. This applies to both. This is uh, the definition of a probability distribution, a listing of all the random variable outcomes of an experiment and the probability associated with each outcome. Remember, last chapter, we didn't want to do all the complicated math to calculate uh, the probability of getting less than or equal to uh, three times in traffic, right? We could actually calculate each one of the individual probabilities and add them up, but no way. Much easier to have a probability distribution and then uh, use that to calculate. Same with continuous. In fact, we have to do that for continuous. Now, the types we studied last chapter, binomial, Poisson, and hypergeometric. The ones we're going to study this chapter, uniform probability distribution, normal or bell-shaped probability distribution, and exponential. Now, here's the big one right here. Questions we can ask. Here are the types of questions we're allowed to ask when we did discrete probability of getting exactly two times late when driving across the bridge seven times. Probability of exactly three sales in four attempts. Exactly one x. No way, can't do it over here. We cannot calculate the probability for exactly x. Discrete probability. We can say the probability between two x values, right? We said things like uh, probability of one or less, right? And then we just added up these two columns to get our probability, right? So probability of less than one, we just added them up. Now think about this. That means we're going between two uh, x values, and we can calculate the probability. But we can also do exact. Over here, forget it. 
when we're doing continuous, probability between two x values, that's all we can do, not x. Now let's look at an example. We looked at the columns separated by gaps because we're, we're talking about a discrete random variable. Over here, no more gaps, no more columns that are not touching. We're going to use area curves. So if we're trying to find the probability of less than or equal to 2,500 bucks, we actually have to calculate the area under a curve. And uh, it'll be no problem. We'll, we'll figure out how to do it. And then we'll get uh, a number like that for probability. Uh, so what in the world do we have to do to get this probability right here? Oh, integral calculus. So you guys forgot that a requirement for this class was integral calculus. You thought that it was just algebra, right? No, you have to do, oops, next page. Um, um, Oh, that's three pages over here. Integral calculus. Uh, instead of doing integral calculus, uh, we'll use Excel functions. Now, this textbook is awesome. It teaches us all about Excel and everything, but they actually show you how to use tables to look up. So instead of doing integral calculus, they'll show you how to use the table. You can just skip over that section in the book. The book does a great job when it comes to the Excel functions, but that's what we're going to use. You know, out there in the real world, you're not using tables anymore. Uh, I'm going to go back to uh, page two in the PDFs. Now I want to uh, get a little preview of uh, continuous probability distributions. In this chapter we're going to ask questions like, what is the probability that a student gets less than 20 points? Actually that's supposed to be 10. I'll have to change that 10 Right, that's my lame attempt in uh, PDF to draw a 10. Right, so what's the probability a student gets 10 or less? Uh, all the area under the curve will be 1. And just like with our uh, discrete, uh, adding up all the columns uh, and the probabilities was 1. Uh, and so we'll do integral calculus to calculate this. Oh, no, 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 we won't. We'll do an Excel function. But we'll have to type in either 10 x value and also the population mean and the standard deviation for the population, and it will tell us that area. Uh, you remember from chapter three we calculated Z scores, uh, and I had lots of questions on the test, you know, what is Z? Oh, it's number of standard deviations away from the mean. So uh, minus one standard deviation would be the Z score, and there's a function that can handle Z scores too, and it will tell you this one right here. Hey, guess what? Just like earlier chapters, when you use the built-in functions, it's always from the smallest, in our case, negative infinity down here, all the way to your x. So it's always from the smallest to whatever x you put in. So that's good news if you remember how the functions worked cumulatively to add up from the smallest to whatever your x is. From earlier chapters, you'll have uh, no problem in this chapter. So uh, the the answer here in terms of area, because we're calculating area with a function, the probability will come from the area under the curve from negative infinity to 10, or negative infinity to minus 1z. So that's what we're doing in this chapter. Here's another example for continuous uh, probability. We'll talk about a uniform distribution. That's where we get this kind of rectangle shape. And if we're asking the question, what is the probability that a top 10 PGA golfer will drive between uh, this and this number of yards, we're going to have to do some calculation. It's not integration. Hey, do you remember from geometry? The uh, height times the width gives you the area. Boom, that's what we're going to do here when we talk about uniform distributions. And we'll calculate that the probability is, uh, the probability will come from the area under the curve. Well, in this case, it's not area under the curve. It's uh, the rectangle from this to this. And that'll be our probability. So I just blocked that out there. The probability will come from the area from here to here. And we'll see how to do uh, rectangle area calculations. Now, a couple more important things about this chapter on continuous probability distribution. Area equals probability. And lines do not have any area. Thus, when we're, we're trying to calculate the probability of exactly 
a particular value, we're never going to get anything. It's zero. One way to think about this is if you have a continuous probability distribution and there's an infinite number of numbers between any other number, depending on uh, the, the, the fineness of the instrument, how could you ever get to that actual number? For us, probability of an exactly uh, a particular value, zero. There's actually a little. Um, in the textbook, there's under uniform distribution, there's a slight example in the margin that calculates and shows you that, yes, that in fact is true. Also, because lines don't have any area, watch this. This is confusing, but this is uh, true, and this is also in our textbook. When you say probability of x less than or equal to 3, that's going to be uh, the uh, equal to the probability of x less than 3. So be careful for that one also. Now, discrete probability function. Here was our binomial. We actually used the binom disk function, but there's that, that function, right? It can calculate probability. Now watch this. When we get over to our normal uh, f of x function, here it is. But guess what? It cannot calculate probability directly. This thing can calculate the height of the curve. So right here it can calculate the height, but because calculating the height, uh, it'll calculate the height, but it's not the probability. This continual probability function called density, it's called a density function, it'll help us figure out the height and it will define the whole area under the curve, but it won't directly find the probability. So we're always going to have to draw two lines with some space in between and then calculate the area in between like we did here. So very important. Uh, these functions here will not directly calculate our probability. Uh, next page here. I mentioned about integral calculus. I hope you remember. No, no, no. No integral calculus. We'll use our Excel functions to calculate area. Another important note about this chapter six, uh, we're going to be dealing with population. So mu and sigma, mean of the population and standard deviation of the population. Late, and then we'll calculate an x value or two x values and then the area between them. Later, we'll definitely get to our sample mean and sample standard deviation because most of the times we do not have population data. But we have to talk about the central limit theorem first uh, coming up in later chapters before we get to this. So in this chapter, it's all about population standard deviation. We plot our uh, normal curve or exponential curve or whatever it is, and then we uh, find out between two x's what the area or probability is. Now I want to go over to Excel and just give you a preview of each one of the uh, uh, continuous probability distributions we're going to use. I have these tabs in black are the ones we're going to look at right now. I'm going to start with uniform. When we're going to do uniform, uh, it's all about this area here. So we'll take, we'll figure out the height of this and the width of this and multiply them together. And that will give us the probability for a uniform probability distribution. Uh, when we get to our normal probability distribution, here it is. And there's the probability right there. You can see right now, uh, this chart says this is 15%. So if you had a score of 11 on a quiz that had a mean of 12 and a standard deviation of 1, the probability of getting uh, 11 or less is 15.86. Now if I change this to 10 and that standard deviation to 2, uh, then we would get um, an area, oh, hey, look, <laughs> the same area, that 10 right there, 15.865. If you guess the reason why we got the uh, same probabilities, notice uh, 2 is a standard deviation, and this is 2 below, I'm sorry, one. it's 2 points below, but 1 standard deviation below this. Now watch if we change this to 11, and this to 1. 
Now look at this. This is how many standard deviations below 12. Well, since it's 1, it's 1. So those, those examples were both one standard deviation below. Uh, in a later video, we'll see how to use the standard normal curve, which means we can actually just use one curve for all normally distributed uh, distributions. So that is an example of just this idea of area. Now let's go look at our standard normal. Here it is. I have a, an x-axis here and all of our z's. You can see if 12 is the mean on your quiz, the z would be 0, right? Because 12, your score minus the mean of 12, oh, it's exactly on the mean. So it's not any standard deviations. It's exactly at the mean. There's zero standard deviations away when you get 12, and the mean is 12. This is uh, an example of the standard normal curve, where we'd have this as our main uh, axis. Now I want to go and look at our uh, final distribution we'll see in this chapter. Whoa, look at that, an exponential. Exponential distributions are often used for waiting times. So here, uh, we want to calculate the in the blue right here, bloop, all of this area, it would be the probability of waiting less than 10 minutes in this particular line. Okay, So that would be 60%. Probability of greater than 15, waiting greater than 15 minutes, that would be all the area there, and it would be 25. Now, I wanna, uh, this is exponential, standard normal, bell-shaped normal curve, the rectangles and squares for uniform, those are all continuous variables. On the sheet called B, this is our binomial distribution. Notice there's gaps. And I could easily do the same thing as I did on those other charts, and we saw how to do this with a chart. If I change uh, the x I want to 4, so if I change this to 4, right, then it, with discrete, you just add up the probabilities for the individual uh, probabilities that we calculated. So the same kind of idea applied from earlier chapters, right? But uh, for us now, we move to our continuous random variables and our continuous probability distributions. All right, when we come back, we'll start our discussions with uh, uniform probability distributions. All right, see you next video.